Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. In this episode, I'm going to do a high-level overview of deducing this from C++23. We'll talk about the use case and some of the odds and ends that it allows. So if you've ever had to implement both const and non-const versions of a member function, then you'll have some idea why this new utility from C23 was added. So let's say I have a templated matrix type. Now to store this data, I'm going to use a standard array. And I want to be able to provide some handy accessors for it. So that's relatively simple. I can return a reference to this thing. Now, you might notice that I am actually using Visual Studio here, and that's because this is the only compiler that supports deducing this today. So I can see that 15 is returned from main, and that's exactly what I expected to see returned from main. But if we actually want this type to be usable, now I need to provide a const version of the overload. Uh, this is a very normal thing to do. All of our container types have const and non-const accessors, like I just provided here. But if you've read my C++ Best Practices book, you may have noticed that I just broke one of the first rules that I have in there, and that is to not copy and paste code. So that's bad. I just now have to deal with two different implementations of this. So one option that I have been a proponent of in the past is to provide a version like this. So I've got a static templated private helper function that I can dispatch to so that I don't have to repeat myself multiple times here. Deducing this exists primarily to alleviate this problem. And the result ends up looking something like this. And you can see that we can use it in const and non-const cases, but we're taking a forwarding reference to ourselves and an X and a Y. And I'm just able to call this with dot at two comma three, and this does exactly what I would expect it to do. It works in every case. It's a templated function though, and that's going to have some upsides and downsides, but it automatically deduces what you needed to deduce, and you don't have to write any of this boilerplate code. Now, if you are like me, you might notice uh, that I can't access data directly in here illegal reference to non-static member. So this thing, this deduced this member function isn't a static member, but it looks and smells an awful lot like a static member. If I try to access member data, then I'm going to get a can't access non-static data error. But you're not in a static function, you would say. There's no static keyword here. So 
what's the deal here? And if I were to try to directly access this thing, then I'm going to get this no match to overloaded function. I expected three arguments, but four were provided, which, well, that doesn't really make any sense at all because I passed three and it wanted three. So that error might need a little bit of help, but I can use free function syntax here to actually get a pointer to this thing and treat it like a static member function if I wanted to. All right, well, it took a little while to get there, but I'm able to get a function pointer to this. That is the at function. And now I can call this thing as if it were a free function. So yeah, there you go. This is deducing this in a nutshell. There's a whole lot more to say about this particular feature but I'm going to leave this here for the moment. We will definitely come back to it in future episodes. So thanks for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. Be sure to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up.